Hey guys, welcome to a new year of my creative year. <laughs> um, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I can't believe we got this far. <laughs> Just, it's surprising to me, but in a good way. Um, I am here to bring you this month's topic and my spin on it. So this month our topic is nature. Um, we are going to be carrying on with the daily creative words and I'm going to try to sketch them as much as I can every day and share them here. Um, I'm going to try. I am missing my daily sketching and at the time of filming this I'm trying hard to get back into it. So <sighs> we will do it. Um, anyway, so this month our topic is nature and there's a million ways you could take that and use it in your art. As I said in the challenge video, um, you could um, go out in nature and you could pick up things that you can print in, um, with in your art. You can pick up things that you actually can put into your art. So that being said, in this bank of drawers behind me, I actually have a drawer that says nature. And it's full of things like dried flowers, dried leaves, bag of moss, a bag of sand, red lava rock from Las Vegas, um, sticks, dr driftwood, uh, mini seashells, like all kinds of things that I find interesting. I bring them home, I dry them out, I wash them off, I put them in a little bag, I stick them in my nature drawer. So I want you this month to find some things like that to either give you inspiration into your art or use actually in your art. Now, that being said, I had an idea. I, I live in the Pacific Northwest now, the land of much rain and much moss. And so I'm going to go outside and I'm going to put some shoes on and a sweatshirt because it's a bit chilly. I think it's like 40 degrees and wet. And we are going to go grab some moss and we are going to use it to print in our art journal. I have no idea if it's going to work. I just thought I was going to do something completely different in my journal for this prompt. And then I, I was like, wait, Moss, wait. So let me uh, unplug the camera from the tripod and let me drag y'all outside with me. Let's get a sweatshirt. Let's get some shoes. Yes, there'll be flip flops. I'll show you. I'm crazy that way. The neighbors all know. Oh, yeah, she's that one. The nut from California. Anyway, let's go get to it. All right, I'll be back. So we are here in my driveway. I was hoping we wouldn't have to go too far because there's usually moss on these trees somewhere. But of course when I want some moss, I don't see any moss. Well, there's some green moss down there. Hmm. Let's go over to the wetlands that are part of my community and let's go see what we can do with, without getting in trouble. So these are the woods and wetlands next to my house. And there is a creek over here. You're not supposed to go in them. It's actually not allowed for any humans to go in there for any reason. I'm usually filming the little creek for my vlog. I don't have to go far though. I saw a piece of moss just laying on the ground, so let's go grab it. That'll work. All right, let's go back and, oh, there's another piece. We'll grab both of them. All right, let's go back and see what we can make. Okay, so we found some moss and let's find a page in my journal that I wanna work on. I, this is a, a um, Dina Wakely journal and I spent a lot of time just wiping off paintbrushes in here. Um, it's a great place for that. Let's find a page. And obviously, as you can tell, I skip around. Maybe this one. So let's move our page protectors around. And put some clips. I had the idea to do um, sort of a woodland scene um, in my journal with a prompt of nature. And then I was like, ooh, moss. I think we're gonna combine the two ideas. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a pencil or a pen or something. Maybe a pen. Oh, let's do a pencil. Let's do a pencil. 
the Stabilo All Pencil. All right, and we are gonna just draw some tree shapes. Now trees are not, they're not smooth, they're not even. I don't have a great grip on the pencil. I'm not pressing too hard. As you saw, my house is surrounded by woods and wetlands. They're just gorgeous. So let's draw a few trees. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that too much on camera, but we are gonna fix that as soon as I find my water brush. Here we go. So like with any other water soluble medium, it's really all about the water. So put the water where you want the color to flow to. That where you don't want it, keep it dry. And obviously, as you can tell, this pencil is water soluble. It has a really nice dark blackish gray color when it's dry. I mean when it's wet and it dries very nicely too. I could get it darker, but I don't need to. Not right now. By laying on more of the pencil. So we are gonna do that across the page. And this page is bumpy because I put, um, I scraped acrylic paint on it. So that's okay because that's gonna lend itself very nicely to the tree shapes. So I think I wanna do them all the way across. If you need to stop and get that pencil wet so you can make those lines darker and you can see better where you're at. The nice thing about sketching in a water soluble pencil, besides the fact that you can just do this and leave it at that, um, is that when you put your paint on here, the pencil is gonna dissolve with the paint. So it's not gonna leave very many, if any, pencil lines behind. I like to use this little trick when I'm painting, especially when I'm watercoloring. I'm not always super concerned about the lines disappearing, but I do sometimes not want big heavy lines and I just make sure I use a color of pencil that will blend nicely. With the paint that I'm gonna use. Okay, I'm gonna do this all the way across and I'll be right back. Okay, now that we have our trees sketched out, oops, things are a little wobbly. Okay, now that we have our trees sketched out, we're gonna take, I'm gonna take these acrylic paints. These are called 12 Shades of Gray. Um, they are different shades, of course, of gray tones. There's also a gray, 
orange, a gray green, a gray violet. Um, you don't have to use these, use what you have. You could mix up something similar using um, uh, gray paint and then a little dab of say blue or red or green to that gray or you could of course make gray with black and white and then add a little dab of green to it to turn it slightly green or a little drab of red. Um, I have a, a mid gray, a warm gray, cold gray which is probably more blue, um, pale gray, and Payne's gray, which is dark. Those are gray, different shades of actual gray paint. Um, I'm gonna swatch, you know what? Let's swatch these real quick for you so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Have conveniently a piece of paper. And reading glasses, okay. So I need a little bit of these anyway for the journal page, so. We'll put a little ball of them on there. That is warm gray. So you can see that's kind of a brown. This is mid gray. Um, cold gray. Very close to mid gray, but slightly bluer. Um, Payne's gray. I'll put a link to these paints in the video description, but again, you don't need these. You can use what you have. You can mix up colors with what you use what you have. This is the pale gray. Then we have green gray. And then brown gray. This isn't the order they come in the box, by the way. This is just the <laughs> order I'm grabbing them out of the pile. Um, yellow gray. Uh, blue gray. The nice thing I've noticed about these two is they actually blend really well with just a little dab of water. Red gray. Which is a very terracotta color. Um, violet gray. And then the last one is orange gray. Okay. I'm gonna show this video in real time. I'm not gonna do too much cutting out or speeding up of anything. We're gonna take our paints here now. We're gonna just use this paper as a palette. And I'm going to paint my trees in more for, and pull them out from the background. I'm gonna use the warmer colors of gray, the yellows, the oranges, the reds, to bring parts of the trees forward and have them look like the light is hitting them and the cooler colors um, and the bluer colors um, to make the tree, parts of the trees recede into the background and make them darker. So let's actually start with pushing things into the background. I'm using a filbert brush. I'm using a very light touch. I'm not hardly touching the paper at all. Again, these paints blend very well with water. I'm gonna grab some water up there. I 
I'm actually very impressed by how they blend. I'm going to leave these streaks of orange and yellow paint in the background because they make um, good sort of sunlight coming through the trees. I'm just kind of bouncing around with the paintbrush with the colors. But I should say color with putting the color here and there. And you can already see, if you're watching, you can see the shapes of the trees start to pop out from the rest of the page. Just with a few brush strokes. Okay, and we're gonna just sort of go down our sample swatches, grabbing different colors. Remember what I said about trees aren't straight, they're not even, they're nature. I've said this before in other tutorials. Um, the joy of painting nature is you don't have to worry about making straight lines because there's nothing in nature that's straight and even. It's all crooked. And if your lines come out too straight, a tip for you I have is use your non-dominant hands, switch hands. So if you're right-handed, use your left-handed. If you're left-handed, use your right hand. Now because these are acrylic paints, once they're dry, they're not gonna move and that makes them nice to layer over, unlike watercolor where you really, you can do some layering, but you can't do a lot of layering. Um, you really need to start light and work darker, but with acrylic paint, if you get too much dark in one place, just let it dry and you can go back over with a light color. I want these to blend, so I'm not super concerned. I'm gonna avoid the Payne's Gray, which is our darkest color. And I'm gonna skip down to the light gray. I know you're thinking, well, what about that moss? She took us outside to go get moss. Trust me. And I just thought of a quote for the page. <laughs> just now, that frequently happens. And I'll have no idea what the words are going to be on the page. Most of my work does have words on it. Um, I don't always know what those words are going to be until sometime during my process, something comes.
you notice I have not changed paint brushes. This is a plain old filbert brush. It is, I don't even know what brand it is. Just a plain old filbert brush. It's probably a Princeton because I do, I do like Princeton paint brushes. They're a good value for the money, I believe. Okay, I'm also gonna skip over the green and I'm gonna go into one of the redder tones. I think this is a brown. And I'm just dipping the tippy top of my filbert brush. And I'm just going to, I'm barely, I'm barely touching the page. Don't forget to get some paint on the little branches. If you're not part of my face, my creative year on Facebook, and you would like to be, it's a free year long um, group where we explore art and art journaling and daily creative practices. We'd love to have you. The link's in the description below. Okay, so now I'm, I'm not gonna even clean my brush off. I'm gonna grab the blue. And again, I'm just barely taking, dipping the tip of my brush. I'm not touching it hard to the page, streaking it on. Okay, there's also a violet color. And I guess I wanted the brown too because I just accidentally stuck my brush in the brown. <laughs> That's okay. Just keep building up your colors until you get something you like. We're going for an abstract or abstracted forest scene. We are not going for a realistic. If you know anything about me and my art, I generally don't do anything that resembles anything too realistic. That's just not who I am. I'm going to grab some of the orange.
Okay, now we're gonna grab, I'm gonna wipe my brush off a bit and I'm gonna grab some of that Payne's Gray and with more thought than I used on the other colors, I'm gonna use the Payne's Gray to highlight some of the shapes, pull them out from the background. I probably should finally switch to a smaller brush because this one's a little bit big. We'll see what we can do. Okay. So anywhere where lines are too sharp or too defined, um, you want to get some water in there and do some blending. This is about suggesting shapes rather than defining them. And just use a damp brush, rinse your brush off in your water. This paint is great because you don't generally need too much water. And even if it's a little dry, it seems to still blend really well. So I, I don't know, I really like this paint. I'll be honest, I had it in my stash a long time. I bought it on a whim and you know, it's one of those things, you know, oh, that sounds interesting. Let me get some of that. And then you never use it. And finally I used it not long ago and I thought, wow, why haven't I used this before? <laughs> this is really nice. I like this. Remember, we haven't used our moss yet. Okay. Payne's Gray is my favorite um, dark accent color has been for a long time. It's more interesting than just plain old black. So it's usually a, some kind of a dark grayish blue. I like that. All right. Now, 
this is the plan anyway. I'm going to take a clip. I'm going to take our moss, which honestly has been sitting here next to me on a paper towel. And it was a little bit damp when I brought it upstairs. Now it's a little drier, which is good. It's very, it's not clean. This is just how I picked it up off the floor, ground, outside. I'm going to clump it all together. I'm going to clip it in my clip. Try to get some of the excess dirt off of it. Not that it matters. We're going to dip it in the paint. And this is the um, gray green and the, um, the green gray and the yellow gray. If some of the moss sticks into the paint and sticks to the page, you know what? I'm okay with that. All right, I'm gonna grab a baby wipe. Let's zoom in just a bit to like right there. So I'm going to take the baby wipe and I'm just going to. The background is dry. So I'm gonna wipe away where the moss hit between the trees. Not all of it, but some of it. I may not be able to get all of it. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So where the moss landed on paint, it'll rub away just fine. Where it landed on paper, probably not so much. Which is fine. But in most of the woods around our house, the trees are covered with a decent amount of moss. So I want the marks to be on the trees, but I also want it to suggest maybe foliage. So it doesn't have to be defined as a mark. I love that. It's very subtle. I don't know if you can see I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see. I like what it did. Let's get some more of the yellow. And the green. And let's reposition our moss. Oops, stuck my finger in some paint. That should be no big surprise. going to, I could do it with a jelly roll pen, then we got to wait for things to dry. Um, why don't we try a whiteout pen? I want to add some white highlights. I can get it to work. It's not working. It's a brand new whiteout pen. Nope. 
All right, so that's dust. Let's... Nope, I want something thicker. Let's get a white paint pen, shall we? White Molotow marker. They never, never, never let me down, the Molotows. Okay, so let's, so we're gonna give it a big pop. This is gonna be one of those cases of do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? So you should really wait for your pages to dry completely before you take um, any kind of a pen, paint or otherwise, to your pages. I'm, I'm pretty bad about that. I kill a lot of pens. I love that way that looks. Okay, so the quote I wanna to add to here is, can, can you, it's not a quote, it's a question. Can you see the forest through the trees? Think about that one. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get out my typewriter. Yes, I do have a typewriter, an old fashioned manual, and I'm gonna type it up and I'll be right back. Okay, anybody who knows me or has been following me for a while knows spelling is not my strong suit. So while I know I spelled the words correctly, Oops, who are we? Is that the right version of through? No idea. I'm sure one of you can tell me if it is or not. Probably isn't, but that's okay. I don't mind. So I'm going to just rip this. I want it to have torn edges. And we're gonna stick it down right about there. I think I'm gonna just use a glue stick because it's easy. There you go. Can you see the forest through the trees? 
So I would love to see what you can make in your journals or with your art or whatever creativity you choose to practice at the moment using the prompt of nature. Where does that take you? What kind of journey does that take you on? What kind of inspiration does it give you? I would love to see that. I would love to see you share here in the Facebook group. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not a member of the Facebook group and you'd like to be, the link's in the description below. That's it for today. I want you all to go out and have a great day. Like, share, and subscribe. Leave a question or comment if you've got one in the um, below here on the video. Um, or if you're in the Facebook group, ask over there. And that's it right now. Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.